Hey there, Breakfast Club. Welcome to Monday's edition. You're with Got That Funk. Thank you for joining me. I just want to say thank you to everybody out there in the audience, especially to those of you who take the moment or two to leave comments on the various videos throughout the week. Um, it's clear that we have some people who comment on almost everybody's videos, and those are the ones I appreciate the most. But of course, each Breakfast Club host has a, a certain set of fans that are more particularly their fans as opposed to others, and it's always interesting seeing uh, who decides to comment on whose videos and who doesn't. But all comments are always welcome, and I would like to encourage more commenting, uh, especially to the people out there who watch Breakfast Club videos but for some reason have never left a comment. Please leave a comment on this video, um, even if you don't have that much to say about the topic of it. And uh, we would invite you and encourage you to drop in more often and leave comments more often. The entire purpose of The Breakfast Club is to generate conversation, and uh, not just amongst The Breakfast Club hosts, but with the audience watching as well. I wanted to say a special thank you and tribute to my friend Bionic Dance, who was uh, one of the first people that um, started off this incarnation of the Breakfast Club along with myself and Peach and Josh. All the other three hosts are, are newer members of the Breakfast Club. Bionic Dance, uh, when she agreed to become a host of the Breakfast Club, I considered that to be a particular score on my part because I've always admired Kate's videos. And quite frankly, I like her Breakfast Club videos best of all. Um, and I don't just mean uh, best of all from the videos that Kate makes herself uh, for her own channel and this one, but I mean, I think Kate is usually makes the best video of the week most weeks here on The Breakfast Club. So kudos, Kate. Keep up the good work. You know I love you, babe. And on Thursday, Kate made a video called The Optimism of the 80s, which I thought was a great video. And... Um, Personally, obviously, I'm, I'm a, a slightly older than Kate. I think I'm about like 10 or 12, 13 years, something like that, older than she is. So for me, I was a grown-up when the 80s happened. And uh, I can understand how if you're sort of in your late single digits and early double-digit years, how the 80s must have seemed awfully exciting and, yeah, even optimistic. Personally, as an adult during the 80s, uh, optimism isn't a word I would choose to describe it. I know this is a matter of semantics. But, I mean, let's face it, optimism is a subjective point of view as is mine, and I would call the 80s upbeat, sure, I'd give you upbeat, um, certainly more upbeat than the 70s were, um, and, and, that, and that's cool, but optimism is, is a little bit of a different picture. Now, I wanted to speak in this video in defense of idealism. Our Friday host on The Breakfast Club, Kazum Fowler, left a comment on Kate's video on Thursday, which said, idealism is dead, unfortunately. And, you know, with maximum respect to my friend Kazum, I can't really agree with that proposition. Although I understand why he said it and where he's coming from, because I don't think idealism is dead. If idealism was dead, there wouldn't be so many people in the millennial generation who are vegan, for example. Being vegan is a particular kind of idealism. I don't think I've ever met someone who is a vegan without reasoning that this, that, that's how they think it ought to be. You know, uh, it's very seldom a personal choice. I mean, most vegans that I know think that's how people ought to eat. And not just eat, but obviously consume as well. You know, you don't consume leather or suede or use other animal products in, uh, in, in any way. You know, that kind of thing. You know, wool, for example, that sort of thing. You don't use that. Um, so yeah, being a vegan is more than just about eating, and, it, and it's a consistent philosophy based on a, a particular ideal, you know, that animals have the same sovereign right to exist as human beings do, and shouldn't be used, uh, exploited uh, unnecessarily. I, I, I can di I'm down with that as an ideal, but I'm not a vegan. And, uh, but I just wanted to use that as an example that, uh, you know, I don't think idealism ever really dies. It just changes shape uh, depending on what generation you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about the uh, sort of baby boomer generation who were young adults in the 1960s and early 70s, their idealism was more sort of politically based. And that's not surprising because they just come through the civil rights era in the 60s and so forth. And we had the, the, the optimism of the moon landing period and all that kind of thing. There's plenty to be uh, pessimistic and... Uh, and um, cynical about as well when it comes to the 60s and early 70s. But I think idealism was quite in vogue at the time and optimism wasn't far behind. And I think the two are definitely linked. And 
I think both are a good thing. However, I want to speak in defense of idealism without necessarily overplaying my hand because there's always going to be a gap between idealism and realism. I get annoyed by people who are overly cynical, who consider their cynicism to be more realistic than idealism. I think that is a very comforting way to look at it. You're making yourself feel better for your cynicism and less guilty that you don't necessarily uh, want to look at things from an idealistic perspective. And maybe you think that's there, there shouldn't be any guilt about it. And I'm not necessarily saying there should be guilt, but basically my attitude is this. And tell me if you disagree, why you disagree. I think that as human beings, you know, we naturally want to prosper. And to prosper, you need a few things. You know, you need food, water, air, shelter, affection, I would argue music, uh, stuff like that. You know, you need certain things in your life to get by. And in an ideal world, in quotation marks, you would probably have some ideas about how things ought to function, how, you, how prosperity ought to be achieved and maintained. Now, I don't believe this utopia is ever possible because that kind of an ideal is too grandiose. You're never going to get a diverse population to come to a great enough consensus to make any kind of utopian ideal society happen, ever. But I think it's important to have ideals and to shoot for them. Shoot high. Aim higher than you realistically think you can expect to achieve. Because if you don't, if you think, well, I'm going to be pragmatic and realistic, and the best I can achieve is result X, and you start shooting for result X, don't be surprised if you have to compromise your way down from there to, you know, S or T or something like that. Whereas if you shoot for Z, if you shoot for that Z, if you shoot for the end, you might be able to negotiate your way back to X, which was the best you could reasonably expect anyway. So it's important, I think, to have idealism and to value idealism and idealists. Uh, because without them, things have a very low probability of ever getting any better. Frankly, if you don't, if you're not an idealist on some level, if you don't think there's any reason to hope for the future, if you don't want to improve the present, including improving yourself as an individual human being, then quite frankly, I question your state of mind. And I'm not saying I think you're crazy. I'm saying I think you're a bit shallow. I think you're a bit dumb. I think there's something not quite right there. Something's missing because we should all want things to improve, both about ourselves and for ourselves. You should never be completely status quo happy with the way things are. We should always be striving to make things better. Yes, for ourselves and for everyone else, because if we make things better for everyone else, by extension, we're making things better for ourselves as well. There I go with that damned idealism again. Now, I think Quite honestly, cynicism has its place. You know, you should never let your idealism completely eclipse uh, your perception of reality, you know. And I get accused of being overly idealistic all the time, and I'm comfortable with that. Because I would rather be seen by people as an idealist than as a cynic. Maybe cynicism has its place. Let me know what you think down below. Frankly, I think idealism is more value. I look forward to seeing what Sister Danger brings to the table, whether she's going to talk about this topic or another. We have to wait and find out. I look forward to hearing all your comments in the comments section as well. And I look forward again to seeing you next week here on The Breakfast Club. Thanks for watching. May all your ups and downs be ups.